I'm not sure whether this is helpful or not. Um, what I'm going to do is to uh, talk a little bit about um, an uh, economic geographer's perspective on um, uh, containers. Uh, one of the aims of economic geography uh, research at Auckland is knowing and making new economic value relations in agri-food and marine industries. This big picture research investigates, among other things, how New Zealand as a territory with distinctive and changing activities and people is mapped or were not mapped as part of other places. This social knowledge of the global and local is vital if we want to create and keep economic value in New Zealand, something that seems to elude our collective capacities over the decades. I use dairying today uh, to illustrate why retaining value is so difficult. Estimates say that the world has um, 17 million shipping containers with around five to six million on the water each year. Containers are a 20th century phenomenon. They became the heart of global trade in goods from the 1970s. This development in moving goods coincided with a surge in multinational companies. These companies outgrew their national base and they reorganized the geographies of their investment, production and trade. Soon global trade became mostly inside these entities, though obviously they were also trying to um, optimise their activities amongst the regulations of different countries. By the mid-1990s, global supply chains of companies had become a prominent focus for company growth and survival. New Zealanders journeyed with the container revolution. Most of our goods uh, ex exports and uh, imports are container shipped in increasingly dedicated supply chain arrangements by small and large companies. Fonterra, and you've already seen a slide there, uh, New Zealand's uh, global dairy corporate, has been supplying ingredients, mostly milk powder, to the world's food manufacturers. Nestle, for example, is Fonterra's biggest customer, and Fonterra is Nestle's largest supplier. International trade statistics, and here's a good map, and you'll notice the absence of New Zealand in the right-hand corner, um, <laughs> Uh, are readily available by country but not by companies. The trouble with aggregated statistics is that they don't allow researchers to delve into the dynamics of global supply chains or to look at the ecological, social, uh, cultural and political conditions in places that make links in global supply chains possible. What might we see if we could map company specific trade flows and obtain better knowledge about where, what and how value is being made? This is to um, build an information base that matches our global setting. But before we try this, we must recognise that a big thought box or container holds us back. And there should be a map now of New Zealand. Thank you very much, James. Um, it's a nice shadowy map. Uh, and it's an analogue for administrative, statistical, material and mental boxing in. We find it difficult to think outside the New Zealand map and others think find it difficult to think about us, as we saw in the previous slide. Taking the rest of the world seriously is a stretch, yet that's what we must do if we aspire, for example, to keep value created in the New Zealand economy in New Zealand. Following the formation of Fonterra, um, Auckland's Global Dairy Research Group um, mapped Fonterra's internationally traded dairy produce. The group included a senior Fonterra manager and also Christina Stringer and myself and several other colleagues. The globalising snapshot, which is the last slide for me, uh, uh, shows um, flows of product, almost all transported by containers. It is the matrix of flows. We, we can ask the question, is the matrix of flows part of the New Zealand economy or only Fonterra's dairy system or something else? The big, the big lessons that... Uh, that from the map uh, lie in the fact that Fonterra is multilocational, multinational, a mix of created value from almost anywhere and yet some uh, places in particular. And so finally, in a globalising world, value that counts or should be counted is unlikely to be just in our territory. This encourages new questions, including the obvious value for whom, where, by what means and what mechanisms for distribution to whom. The answers aren't contained solely or even mostly in New Zealand. New Zealand's collective focus becomes more like how do we all responsibly work in the complexities of the global economy, inventing new behaviours and supportive institutions to generate value that sticks in New Zealand. <laughs>